All right, y'all. So most folks done decided to go on national TV to work out their personal relationship problems, and I am here for it. <laughs> Auntie Momo and we are back y'all we are back for a new season of marriage boot camp hip-hop edition this is season 15 episode 1 electing to face the music y'all um, I'm glad that we are back with the new season of marriage boot camp I enjoyed this episode um, I enjoyed some of the people on it um, before we get into everything regular church announcements if you have not done so just yet please go ahead and subscribe to my channel let me know you stop by, give me a thumbs up, and then make sure your notifications are turned on, y'all. Um, look down in my description box because I be leaving some links and some information to some little merch and stuff like that that you might need in your life. So go and look down there. You know what I'm saying? But um, I enjoyed this first episode. I will say though, I am not a fan of Hazelie's. Not one bit, not now, nutter. I don't cut for the girl. I don't like Hazel E. But, we gonna get through this review, we gonna get through this season, even though I'm not feeling Hazel E, I'm not, y'all, Hazel E is shaped like a tampon, I'm just gonna tell y'all, she's shaped like a tampon with the string cut off, that's what she was giving me, was highlighter tampon, but look here, hopefully y'all are ready for this review, cause I'm ready to give it to you, so let's go and get right on up into it, y'all, alright y'all, so I'm just gonna give y'all a rundown of the couples, okay, we got Hazel Lee, a.k.a. Tampon, and her boyfriend, Davon. Now, there's a 15-year age difference between the two of them. He is 25, she's 40. She wants to know if he's in it for the clout. Girl, Hazel E came in on this old stuck-up mess talking about, yes, I'm a rap pimpstress or whatever she doggone said. Girl, Hazel. Don't nobody know no music from you. None. I remember something about you had a song called something like a valley girl, but that's all I know. That's it. That's all. I don't know nothing else about the song. I don't even know how the damn song go. But in her mind, she's a rapstress, um, freestyle king and, and all this shit. She got it just like that. What the hell was that? Okay, we back, y'all. You know, I told y'all, we in the house, okay? It's not a new house, but it's new to us. It's an older house, but it's new to us. So, the motherfucker be cricking and cranking and making noise and stuff. So, we just got to get used to it. So, if y'all hear something like that, it's just the house. Another thing that we are learning is our neighbors in this new neighborhood. Um, so far, I've seen we the only blacks in this neighborhood. And when I tell you the white folks around here are extra fucking friendly, I tell my husband, y'all, now we done seen the purge before. These motherfuckers come around here trying to purge some shit. You just better make sure you got shit rock, clock, and ready to go. And they like to pop fireworks. So if you hear a boom, that's my neighbors. We just let them do what they do. We new around here. We trying to get our goddamn bearings down, shit. But Davon wants y'all to know that he ain't no sugar baby, that he ain't in it for the clout. But Hazel, what clout, girl? I can go on and on about Hazel, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And she had on this... <laughs> girl, she was killing me with this pay less kill bill two-piece that she had on. Child, she looked like a tampon stuffed in a two-piece Kill Bill out. She just, I just, and she's had surgeries, y'all. How you look like this with surgeries, though, dog? And next up, we got Corrupt and Tony. Y'all remember Corrupt DPG Dog Pound Crew of Gang or whatever the hell it was. Him and his girl, Tony, they have been together for three years. Tony is a hood-ass Asian chick. She's blazing. She Asian on the outside, but she's black on the inside. I'm sure she got some soy sauce and a fucking 22 in her purse right now with some hot sauce in her bag, okay? She look hood as hell. They can't get along. They arguing on the way there. Come to find out, he had cheated before in the past. She forgave his ass. Come to find out, yesterday, she found out the nigga done cheated again. And y'all come to marriage boot camp to fix y'all relationship. 
Child, she mad. They arguing on the way there. Another thing is he, he drinks too damn much. Corrupt is that uncle that you can't take no damn way if it's going to be liquor because that fool is finna get frat boy wasted. And he finna show his naked ass. Which is girl. Now, like I said, um... Tampon and her boyfriend was the first ones there, right? So as soon as they get there and they see the bar and all of that, they're like, oh, shoot, it's the bar. Let's get it cracking. And when Corrupt and his girl, Tony, got there, like I said, they done already got to a whole goddamn argument. She ready to fight this nigga in the middle of the street. He gets there and they're like, hey, it's a bar over here. Let's go get something to drink. He's like, a bar? This what I'm talking about? And she like, oh, hell. This fool finna start drinking and showing his naked ass. And that's what he did, y'all. Corrupt acted a damn fool this goddamn episode. A fool. We ain't even into a good. And he acted a plum goddamn fool. I was like, okay, here we go with this shit. Y'all, next we got Shonda and Willie Taylor. I don't like Willie. But I like Shonda. Shonda is a beautiful chocolate skin girl. You better go, girl. I mean, she's like a natural beauty. I love Shonda. I really do. But they there because you know Willie is a habitual cheater. She cheated one time in retaliation of him cheating 50 to 11 times. So now it's a problem. So they're there because of his um, inability to keep his Wayne Wayne in his pants. Now when they get to the house, they are met by Hazel, um, well, Tampon and her boyfriend, and then Corrupt and his girl, Tony. Now, Hazel E, a.k.a. Tampon and Shonda, they have had issues before. Now, I don't know if y'all remember how long ago it was when Hazel E was dating that other younger guy. Y'all know Hazel E like to go after them young guy. She just a sugar mama. That's what you, you sugar mama, be a sugar mama. It is what it is. You don't live with that. Stand ten toes down on that shawty. But... She was making comments, a bunch of homophobic comments, a bunch of colorist comments saying stuff about uh, dark-skinned girls and you black bitches, this, that, and the other, and y'all couldn't pass the paper brown bag test. I, I already didn't cut for her as it was, but definitely after she made the homophobic and the colorist statements that she made, I really, like, lost all respect for her. I just, I'm, I'm not there for her. I'm not feeling her. Well, her and Shonda ended up having it out on the internet behind her making that post. Shonda went and responded to that post. And so, they had an exchange of words, or not even exchange of words online. They just had a disagreement, whoop de whoop yada, 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 whatever it is, right? So, Hazel Lee eventually brings it up to Shauna. She's like, okay, you. Shauna's like, oh, no, bitch, what, me, you, yes, me, what, what? And she's just basically like, look, you know, you don't know me. I don't know you. We didn't have problems. It's just dumb. And Hazel needs to shut her damn mouth. Y'all, if somebody might get wrong, I mean, get mad at me when I say this, but I say what I say because this is my platform and I can say what the hell I want to say. But to me, Hazel Lee is the perfect example of you can be light-skinned with pretty eyes and all of that. And you can still look like you got beat with an ugly stick. Like, she looked like she got beat in the face with a socks full of rocks. She's not cute at all. But she, And then, uh, aside from her physical appearance, her attitude and her demeanor that go along with it, girl, you look like a booger wolf. I'm just telling you what, 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 I'm just telling you, you're ugly. You're very ugly. But her and Hazelie end up talking and, and squashing it and deciding that they're going to move past it. But we do see on some clips from later on in this season that don't particularly happen. Them niggas end up coming to blows and then the dudes come to blows and all of that. But we're going to save that for when that airs. But I'm ready to see that when that airs. I want to see that. Y'all, Phaedra and Medina. Cha. Medina is supposedly, well, not, I'm not going to say supposedly because I don't know, but he's a, a ghostwriter. He said for a lot of your famous rap stars and this, that, and the other. I ain't never heard of Medina. Never heard of him. But then again, he's a ghostwriter. Who say we is going to hear from him? But um, Phaedra is your typical Southern belle. She thinks everything is rainbows, kittens, and puppies and shit, and everything is perfect in her life. Her homeboy Medina is like, look here. I'm trying to fill on a little booty, little titty. Trying to stick the tip in or something. She ain't giving up nothing. No affection, no cookies, no nothing. And he's sick of this shit. This boy finna blow his goddamn cap. He ain't got nothing that nookie or nothing. And and I, you know, hey, I ain't mad at the man. You want some loving. 
Phaedra, what is you doing? Phaedra, stop. We all knew you was full of shit when you tried to pull that whole stunt when you ain't want to tell nobody how far along you was pregnant because you didn't want nobody to know that you and Paolo was getting it in before y'all got married and all that said in the other girl. Ain't nobody believed you since then. I'm just saying, girl. Get that man some pussy and stop playing. <laughs> All right, y'all, so last in the house is Tahiri and Vado. They're longtime friends. They became lovers. They've been dating for the last 18 months. Tahiri's issues with him is that she wants him to open up and to communicate with her more. Nigga, what's going on with you? Nigga, what's on your motherfucking mind? Tell me what the hell is going on with you. They both have come in there with baggage, okay? He says that basically she don't show him the kind of love that she's shown other men because they've been friends for so long and so yada, 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 whoop. Whoop -dee -whoop -dee -whoop -dee -whoop -dee -whoop -dee Same old bullshit, different shovel. Y'all, everybody's sitting, all the couples are there. They all drinking, chilling, chopping it up, whatever. Dr. Ish comes in and he takes them to their first exercise they're going to be doing, and it's a relationship debate. They got everything set up right there at the Democratic National Convention and some shit. They got CIA all up around there and podiums and, and everything, looking like Bray Rock all up in there. But um, Judge told us they're looking straight gangster. I'm sure she had razor blades and lemon juice in her goddamn bag, some goddamn wear. And this is where they play the confessionals where everybody is, you know, their own individual confessional and they're telling like what issues it is that they're having with their significant other and what it is that they need to fix or whatever, right? So it starts off with um, Vado. Vado, Vado, I don't know how to say the nigga name. We're going to call the nigga Vado. Vado feels that Tahiri is a thirst bucket. He feels like she just basically lends her heart out to basically anybody and everybody. He called her a hoe. Long story short, he's trying to say the girl is a hoe, and that's real messed up. She says that he doesn't communicate. He doesn't open up. She don't know what the hell is going on with him. And they sort of have a little bit of a breakthrough because he says that he's been friends with her for so long. He knows her traits. He knows how she is in other relationships because he has seen that. He doesn't feel like he's getting the same thing that she is giving in other relationships to him. You know? And so that's what their problem is. She pissed off about that or whatever, y'all. They just don't, they don't, they don't communicate. Hazel E thinks that, um, tampon, <laughs> Hazel tampon thinks that her boyfriend, Davon, is with her for the clout, which he probably is. But then again, what clout do you have, Hazel? You his sugar mama, and that's fine. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm not giving up my money like that. You know, no, you know what I'm saying? But that's just me, though. We ain't talking about me. We talking about you. Now, Davon, he's a young cat, and he knows he got him a little sugar mama, whatever. But he says he loves her, and he wants to show her that he's committed to her. I mean, shit, they committed now, shit. You didn't have the baby for the nigga, so... At least for the next 18 years, the niggas got damn committed shit. Medina says that Phaedra lives in a fairy tale. Because of her past, she has these walls built up and that it's hard to break down those walls and get any sort of affection. Phaedra says that um, her and Medina have not had sex yet because she knows the power of her puss. She says if I put this thing on him, Judge, I'm almost certain they're going to be looking for it in the daytime with a flashlight. He going to pull up at the grass in my mama house looking for this sweet goddamn thing. So I just don't want to put it on him like that. I feel you, Phaedra. My shit good, too. She got this nigga walking around with all kind of blue balls and shit. You wrong as hell, Phaedra. You wrong. Shonda says Willie is a habitual cheater, which we already fucking know. We, we, we knew that, sister. When you gonna know that and wise the fuck up and leave his goddamn ass alone? Um, Willie says that she is disrespectful and that she does not know how to talk with him and communicate with him. But... He's still hung up on the fact that she cheated. You cheated 5,100 times, but she cheated one time. And so now you, you pissed off and you feel disrespect and all this other bullshit, right? Oh, these niggas ain't shit. Tony says corrupt is a damn alcoholic, which he is. Baby, when I tell you this nigga was drunk than a skunk, he was living like a titty. He was up there saying that she thinks that I want to have sex with all these other girls. I'm 67 years old. I can't be having sex with these other women. And I love my dick. He said, I love my dick. I don't want to stick my dick in nothing. Judge Tola and Dr. Ish had to reel that nigga in. Look here, I'm going to need you to calm down with the dick. You singing dick, 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 dick everywhere. Calm that word down, okay? Bring it back in. Tony says when he's sober, he's an amazing guy. Girl, that's a big-ass extreme. Because when he came in, he seemed like he was friendly and all of that. But, the, yeah, girl, that, that, that nigga got that hooey. 
And he was drinking that clear liquor too, and he was acting the ass like that. Normally, brown liquor, how you ready to cuss people out and fight people now, then it was on that clear shit. He was drinking liquor and champagne. Bad. Bad combination. Bad combination. So, Dr. Ish ends up giving them their elected office titles. For the explosive energy, he gives that to Tony and Corrupt. For cheaters of the house, of course, that's going to go to Shonda and Willie goddamn ass. For the directors of baggage, that's going to go to Tahiri and Vado. For them, Avado. For them having their own baggage that they're bringing in from prior relationships into this relationship. Um... My bad. The Department of Injustice goes to Hazel E. and Davon, um, a.k.a. Tampon and Davon. And the Federal Bureau of Imperfection very rightly goes to Phaedra and to Medina. Now, everybody goes to their rooms. Phaedra goes to her room. Her and Medina go to her, their room. And, of course, she loves it. It's broken. It's pink everywhere like a girl's room. Real girly, foofy, and pink. But everything is broke the fuck up like bitch. You, you, you ain't goddamn perfect. She loves the room. She doesn't get the representation of it. He does. He's like, yeah, it's beautiful, but everything in here is broken. Bitch, that's you. You're beautiful, but you're goddamn broken. Um, Willie and Shonda, their room has text messages all over the room from him cheating with other bitches. Also got panties and bras sprung up. I wouldn't have liked that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have liked that at all. But that's in your face and you have to deal with the shit. That's the point, as we already know, what their rooms are, right? Um, corrupt in Tony's room, it was real dark, real gloomy, volcanoes, fires everywhere. That's a representation of them. That fire and desire. Like they just going at it. It was real. That shit looks scary. I don't want to sleep up in that goddamn shit. Devon and Hazel E's room, a.k.a. Tampon, their room was like pictures of them up, but he was in the background blurred, and she was in the front, like her, like a mama, and your baby's in the back of you, right? It had like little gold toys, little silver toys and shit as a representation of her being his mama, <laughs> and she taking care of a goddamn baby. Y'all, Tahiri and Vado's room was like an airport baggage claim, of course, representing them bringing all this baggage from prior relationships into the relationship that they're in right now. Now, as they're in their room, Vado does not like, Vado, Vado, I can't get this nigga name right for shit. Anyways, he don't like the goddamn room. He mad as hell. Dr. Ish ends up coming in there, sitting Tahiri and Vado down and was talking to them. In the middle of him talking to them, Medina come bring his ass up in the goddamn room, just being a nigga. Nosey looking all out the window. What this shit look like? Oh man, this your room, my nigga, for real? All up in the goddamn shit. Medina, uh, Dr. Ish is like, my nigga, did you miss your flight? Is you lost, nigga? I was having a heart to heart with these goddamn niggas. Like, <laughs> just being a nigga all up in a goddamn way. So y'all, it's ending with Tahiri being mad at Vado because of the statements that he made, calling her a thirst bucket, basically calling her a hoe without calling her a hoe. And then Tony and Corrupt are still arguing. She tells him, look here, you keep on with the same bullshit. I'm going to leave your ass, and I'm not playing with you. Corrupt says to her, okay, well, you for real about that? She said, yes, I'm for real. And niggas say, well, stand on your word then. When we get home, get your shit and get the fuck out. I was like, damn. Bitch, if that ain't a sign right there that you need to get your hat, your coat, and leave, motherfucker, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But look here, y'all. I enjoyed this first episode. I am looking for the rest of the episodes. Again, I do not like Hazel E, but I love Shonda. I can deal with some Phaedra, uh, Phaedra and Corrupt look like he gonna be that one nigga that's going to set it off, and I am here for it. But look here, if it was anything that I missed, y'all already know, drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.